to uh, Tel Aviv now, live, and get some analysis from Mr. Fire Uri Geller. Uh, Uri, thank you so much again for joining me. Oh, you've got a giant bear. What, what's, the, what's the bear about, Uri? In a moment, I'll tell you. First of all, may I take this opportunity to wish everyone, uh, all your viewers, a mm. happy Christmas, uh, and to all your Jewish viewers, and there are plenty, happy Hanukkah, Hanukkah Sameach. Now, why am I holding this teddy bear? Let me tell you why. Yesterday, an, an IDF, an Israeli commando unit, broke into a school in Gaza, a school, an elementary school. By the way, that's where all the weapons are. They found a teddy bear about this size. They tore the teddy bear open, and inside the teddy bear, there was ammunition, and they found sniper rifles, they found landmines, they found inside toys, grenades. I mean, this is in an elementary school, Nana. Now, let me just uh, talk a little about what happened yesterday. You know, last night, the UN meant to call for a ceasefire because those protesters are shouting, uh, what about a ceasefire? Thankfully, our friends, the Americans, vetoed it. Now, look, Nana, people don't understand, and let me explain why there cannot and must not be a ceasefire. Look, a ceasefire would save Hamas, Hamas ISIS. A ceasefire would enable Hamas to repeat over again, October the 7th. A ceasefire would not free our hostages. Now, let me ask you this question. All your viewers, send, send, send Nana on Facebook or Instagram. Would the UK have accepted a ceasefire when it was fighting the Falkland War? No, because that would have handed a victory to Argentina. Would the UK have accepted a ceasefire when it was fighting the Nazis? Obviously not. So for the same reasons, there can be no ceasefire here until Israel has defeated Hamas. By the way, you know, you must understand that the people who will benefit when Israel defeats Hamas are the Palestinians in Gaza. They are right now led by a cruel, oppressive, dictatorial regime. You know, Hamas does not hold elections. Hamas does not feed its people. Hamas oppresses women. Hamas kills gays. This is unbelievable. So uh, one more thing I want to show you, and this is important for you all to hear and understand. Synchronicity wise, I don't know why I chose to stand next to Darth Vader from Star Wars. Uh, by the way, the reason he's in my museum is because the actor who played Darth Vader was Dave Prowse, who was a very good friend of mine. Now, listen to this. I have something to say which will shock your viewers. Do you know how much Gaza has received in foreign aid in the past few years? I'll tell you. Approximately $10 billion. $10 billion from the UN, from the US, from Qatar, from the EU. $10 billion. Can you imagine what Gaza should look like it should be like Singapore. It should be like Dubai. Mm -hmm. It should be wealthier than the whole Knights Bridge in London. Now ask yourself, why not? The answer is simple. It's because Hamas has stolen all the money and used it for weapons and tunnels. Its leader is called Ishmael Haniyeh, does not live in Gaza. Do you know where he lives? He lives in a luxury hotel in Qatar, and he himself has a personal fortune of $4 billion. All this while ordinary people in Gaza are struggling to survive. You can, you can Google, Google yeah. them flying in their private jets, yeah. the Hamas leaders. Yeah, it, it, it is frightening. I, I, I think a lot of people are very concerned about all the death and destruction within Gaza. So I know the Israeli people are as well. Uh, Uri, it's, it's really good to talk to you, really good to see you. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughts. That's Uri Keller. Thank He's you. live there in Tel Aviv. Thank you very much. Thank Uri you. Keller.